last presentation. Uh, this is made by a very young, our, probably our youngest presenter, not only from this panel, but from the whole uh, conference at this time. Her name is Mariam Alakirus. She's uh, 17 years old. <laughs> Lebanese American University, and she's a very passionate and hardworking individual who loves challenges and who loves to draw smiles on people's faces. <laughs> she's currently majoring in psychology, and she's aspiring to become a corporate psychologist. She is the youngest person to date in the Arab world who reached base Camp Everest during the COVID pandemic. And her purpose, you know why? Because she wanted to give hope. She uh, is really uh, happy to give hope and, like she says, uh, bring smile to the, to the people's faces. And now she has uh, she started working with our uh, United Nations office in uh, Geneva, and, and she's like a representative of WWP in Lebanon for the United Nations. And her role model is her parents. Mm -hmm. And her father is here, actually. We need to uh, honor him as well. Uh, <laughs> she's so young. She had to come with someone. <laughs> from the Middle East, from Lebanon. She came straight from the roots. So we will give her the floor without any. dress squeals of laughter and childhood games, a ruse to the horrors unfolding in this unhospitable environment. <laughs> Bawana's family moved to this camp in Baghdad's province four years ago after her father lost his job. Humanitarian aid and menial work earning three dollars a day providing the basic staples to survive. But since the Taliban takeover two and a half months ago, any money or assistance has dried up. And with eight mouths to feed, Pawana's father is now doing the unthinkable. I have no work, no money, no food. I have to sell my daughter, he says. I have no other choice. Pawana, who dreams of going to school and becoming a teacher, applies makeup. A favorite pastime for little girls, but Pawana knows she is preparing for what awaits her. My father has sold me because we don't have bread, rice and flour. He has sold me to an old man. The white-bearded man who claims he's 55 years old comes to collect her. He's bought Parwana for 200,000 Afghanis, just over 2,000 US dollars. Covered up. Pawana whimpers as her mother holds her. This is your bride, please take care of her, says Pawana's father. Of course I will take care of her, replies the man. His large hands grab her small frame. Pawana tries to pull away. As he carries her only bag of belongings, she again resists. Digging her heels into the dirt. But it's futile. The fate of this small, helpless child has been sealed. Child marriage is nothing new in poor rural parts of Afghanistan. But human rights activists are reporting an increase in cases because of the economic and humanitarian crisis engulfing the country. 
These are devastating decisions that no parent should ever have to make, and it really speaks to Just like Puana, um, another girl raped, sold, and imprisoned. Her name is Hayat. I'm sorry, but I think the slide is not moving. Okay, so Hayat. A 17 year old girl who was only 13 years old when her family decided to flee Syria to come to Lebanon due to the war. Hayat was only 14 years old when her family decided to sell her to a man twice her age, Mila. Hayat was forced, Hayat was forced to drop out of school to work as a maid. Hayat, not only does she, is she an out of education now, but also lives in poverty. Hayat and her husband live in a refugee camp in northern Lebanon. Out, they live out of leftover meals from neighbors. Hayat was 17 years old when she had her first baby, a baby girl who was the only thing keeping her alive. One day, Bilal decided that he can no longer provide for both Hayat and his child. So he agreed to $5,000 in return for Hayat and the baby. Hayat, along the road, lost her baby. She was taken away from her. <coughs> Hayat, now suffers from malnourishment, abuse, rape, and on occasions, she's forced to smuggle drugs outside the borders of Lebanon. Three years later, Hayat was found dead due to an overdose. Kowana and Hayat are just two examples out of 21 million people, children, and women who undergo and, uh, these harsh conditions on a daily basis. I'm sorry. No more. Okay, so I'm sorry, but it seems that there's a bit of complications with the slide. Okay. So according to a, to a study done by the International Labour Organization, an estimate of 600,000 women and children are victims in, found in the Middle East. That's 600,000 innocent lives. Children who deserve an education are now perfect means for rape, smuggling, and forced labor. Millions of children are now, million, sorry, millions of children are, have been swept away from their rights and freedom as human beings. Child trafficking is now the largest network crime today. Politic, politicians and other corrupt systems have a hand in this. Yes. Women and children are not for sale. Mm -hmm. Passionate, courageous, and adventurous. I am Maryam K. Lewis, an 18-year-old girl from Lebanon. I am currently pursuing my higher education in psychology at the Lebanese American University of Lebanon. I, in 20, 2021, I was announced as the youngest Arab, the youngest person in the Arab world to do Everest Base Camp, approximately 5,364 meters. As a young, as a WFWP young representative in the Middle East region, my mission today is to educate uh, parents, 
and society about the physiological and psychological dangers behind child trafficking and child marriage. By providing schools, universities, and uh, schools, universities, and refugee camps with the proper uh, with the proper programs, by doing, by educating, and by educating and uh, and providing women and children with the proper skills and mindsets in order for them to stand on their own two feet, they will be able to they will be able to uh, take charge of their lives and their own destiny. By doing so, we will be empowering women and children and giving them hope in order to continue to live. And what's more powerful than hope? As the story goes, there was a little boy who was found frantically tossing sea fish into the sea. As a man approaches him and asks, what difference is it going to make when there are millions of sea fish who are going to die anyways? The boy replies, I cannot save all of these sea fish, but to those that I do save, it makes a difference. Change? is hard at first, challenging in the middle, but boy is it gorgeous at the end, Robin Sharma. So let us turn dreams into a reality together. Thank you. UN, uh, of our WWP UN office director, 
who has prepared a text, a framework uh, for this resolution. The points, they are up to you to make. So afterwards, after she, she reads the, the, the framework, uh, please, you are invited to um, send her to see her and give her your points. And by tomorrow, we will have some text prepared, a fixed text, and at the conclusion of this conference, we are going to present it. So I give the floor to Mrs. Hanson. <coughs>
were remarkable and really deeply moved to combine them with the proposition that we, uh, we work on resolutions. I would like to propose and ask, is it possible to combine what we've all heard, that we talk specifically about the peacekeeping missions, that the peacekeeping missions, the mandate should be changed, that there should be a link, that there should never be any negotiation anymore without women that are well chosen by all those women's organizations that we've heard about that they exist, so that they really represent the women's mm -hmm. viewpoint and the desire. I was also struck by the fact that whatever we're talking about, all this strong gender stuff, what really reunites really women, whether they have children themselves or not, is this sense of attachment to life, that we have to protect life. We should never get let go of that. That is the strength of why we are here on Earth. So we could say that where are fighting communities that are kept, in fact, away from finding a solution because we keep renewing the mandate to keep them separated, whereas they never make their peace, we can, with all that we learned, sit together within the, I'm not a member yet, but I will become a member, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we can sit together and we can say, what are the concrete tools, what are the toolkits yeah. that we are going to give to the women to do that in the communities. Yeah. The Turkish and the Greeks in Cyprus, they should know that if the, uh, the peacekeeping continues, every month there has to be a report. What has been done to tone down the hatred? What has been done to in the schools, at home, wherever, in the community? What have we done, what have we achieved to, aim, to improve the way we live together? I also have a particular question to uh, uh, Madame for Kuwait, because Kuwait has been in my heart as the most shocking place on earth, mm -hmm. in the sense that, and that's why I ask you, you are so peaceful, but you have gone through more than anybody else on earth. I once sat in a plane with uh, somebody of the UN who was, you know, in, in this also peacekeeping, and he said that the, the, the invasion, the Iraqi invasion in Kuwait, never ever had they seen more rape in, in a world, like, like the whole country had been taken. And you are here, peaceful, as if you had even made peace with men as you know, <coughs> living on the earth. So you can make great contribution to this because this is an important aspect of what's going on in these uh, horrible uh, patricide wars. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, 1990, Kuwait being exposed to an invasion from a neighbor. 
yeah. enable that we had such a relationship that no Kuwaiti house without a blood of hierarchy, you know, independence. Invasion itself, within for seven months, just have the feeling that you don't have your land is something old. We've been, I, I haven't been there in Kuwait, but there, are, there were 600 um, uh, persons who have been taken to jail and exposed to uh, torch in, in, by Iraqis. And as you said, it might be 600, it's not that big number, but for the Kuwaiti team, it was. Uh, I said, sometimes it's very easy to give a word, but when you implement or you when start to do, it's not easy. Maybe in Kuwait, we don't have any kind of trouble uh, regarding war or struggles or such and such a thing. But I bet most of you have the feeling that we in touch by others suffer. Uh, peace, maybe for our voice, it might be like a whisper. But this whisper can affect. Uh, the resolution I mentioned, it is not a magic stick that we can change or, or make uh, a new world. But it, for us, it is an initiative, as I said. And this initiative started to make a kind of networking, <coughs> locally, regionally, and globally. Uh, I hope I clarify something for you. Uh, my question, excuse me, Maria, when you mentioned about the child trafficking, uh, and you gave us the examples from Afghanistan and Lebanon, I think most of us have the idea through a movie <coughs> it was the sound of freedom mm -hmm. that the countries that had you know the most uh, activities in child trafficking, it was United Kingdom. stop um, this, uh, I would say, violence or crime, 
uh, other than educating would be to put um, strict measures um, such as maybe a prison, uh, maybe community service as in to work with organizations because sometimes uh, when we do something wrong, we may feel like afterwards we may feel guilty. So in order to stop that from happening, um, maybe they would work uh, in NGOs with uh, maybe children helping around, uh, of course with the uh, support and proper uh, help from specialists in order to make sure that everything is uh, in place. And I also believe in order for uh, women, uh, this is on another note, in order to, for women to, empower, to be empowered and to build their life, we can start with refugee camps and help women teach them how to build small businesses in order to uh, be able to help themselves financially as well as mentally and psychologically. Thank you. I hope this answers your question. What I wanted to add is that in our countries like Spain or France or other countries, we can work against prostitution because the trafficking of women in many cases uh, is for prostitution in the rich countries. This is one point. Uh, other point is to work with men because this sexual violence is not a problem of women. Yeah. It's a universal problem. So they have to be involved. Uh, there are many men who, who, who work for a just uh, world, a just, uh, for many objectives. So this sexual violence is a universal objective. So men have to work with us on this. Thank you very much. I think there was a question here near the front row. Uh, the microphone that can be heard. 